December 2020, a single F-35 touches down at Tel Nof Air Force Base in Israel. But this isn't just another stealth fighter. This jet carries capabilities no other F-35 on Earth possesses. Aircraft serial number 924, the only test F-35 outside American soil. While the world debates what makes Israel's Air Force so lethal, the answer sits in a heavily guarded hangar. This machine can do things Lockheed Martin's engineers said were impossible. The modifications are classified, the weapon systems are unique, and what this jet has proven in the last five years has changed modern air warfare forever. If you agree Israel's Air Force sets the standard, type yes in the comments. But here's what makes this story incredible. Every F-35 nation relies on American facilities for testing and upgrades, every single one, except Israel. They demanded something different, they negotiated something unprecedented. And when Lockheed Martin delivered aircraft AS-15 to Tel Nof, they handed Israel a capability that even the US Air Force doesn't have in quite the same way. To understand why this matters, we need to go back to where it all started. February 2010, Israel signs the contract, 50 F-35s with an option for 25 more. But Israeli defense officials aren't celebrating yet. They know the standard F-35 won't cut it. Israel faces threats no other F-35 nation confronts. Iranian air defenses, Syrian radar networks, Hezbollah's arsenal in Lebanon. The standard joint strike fighter needs modifications, serious ones. Here's where it gets interesting. The F-35 program operates under strict rules. Every partner nation gets the same aircraft, same software, same weapons, same everything. The US maintains control over every line of code. When countries want changes, they submit requests to American facilities. They wait, they follow US timelines. Israel said no. Defense minister negotiations went straight to the Pentagon. The message was clear. We'll buy your jets, we'll invest billions, but we need autonomy, we need our own modifications, we need to integrate our own systems, and we need a dedicated test aircraft to make it happen. The Pentagon faced a choice, lose a $5 billion sale or grant unprecedented access. They chose option two, but with conditions. Israel could modify the F-35, they could install their own systems, they could even tinker with the software architecture, but they'd be on their own for those modifications. No US support for Israeli changes, no integration with American update cycles. Complete independence meant complete responsibility. Israel accepted immediately. November 2020, aircraft AS-15 arrives at Tel Nof, the 15th F-35I Aider off the production line. But this one's different. While the other 41 Israeli F-35s headed to Nevatim Air Base for combat squadrons, AS-15 goes to the flight testing center. The FTC hasn't received a new aircraft in 14 years. Now they're getting the most advanced fighter jet in the world. A jet specifically configured for one mission, testing Israeli modifications that will eventually equip the entire fleet. The modifications start immediately. Raphael Advanced Defense Systems delivers the SPICE Precision Guided Bomb, smaller than standard F-35 weapons, designed to fit in the internal weapons bay without compromising stealth. They mount it, they test it, they measure load factors during complex maneuvers, they check for flutter phenomena, they analyze release characteristics from the internal bay. Then comes the electronic warfare suite. Israel Aerospace Industries installs command and control software on top of the F-35's existing programming. No other nation has this access. The software links the F-35 sensors to Israeli-specific networks. It integrates with Israel's national defense grid. It allows the pilot to communicate through channels American F-35s can't access. The defensive countermeasures come next. Israeli engineers know the electromagnetic signature of every Russian-made radar system in the Middle East. They've studied S-300 batteries. They've analyzed the S-400. They know how these systems search, how they track, how they lock. The modifications tune the F-35's electronic warfare systems specifically for these threats. When an Israeli F-35 encounters an S-300, it's not just stealthy, it's optimized to defeat that exact threat. March 2024, 
AS-15 takes off from Telnoff carrying four external GBU-31 JDAMs, 2,000-pound bombs mounted on wing pylons, visible to radar, completely unstealthy. This configuration has a name in fighter pilot jargon, beast mode. The F-35 was never designed for this. Internal weapons bays preserve stealth. External weapons destroy it. Every F-35 manual says keep weapons internal. Lockheed Martin designed the jet around internal carriage. The U.S. Air Force trains pilots to maintain stealth profiles. Israel had different ideas. The test pilots pushed the aircraft through aggressive maneuvers, high G turns, rapid climbs, sudden dives. The engineers on the ground monitor every sensor, load stress on the wing pylons, aerodynamic stability, release separation. If the bombs interfere with airflow during release, they could strike the aircraft. If the pylons can't handle the stress, they could fail mid-flight. The tests succeed. AS-15 proves the F-35I can carry external weapons safely, can maneuver with them effectively, can release them cleanly. Israel becomes the first and only nation to fly F-35s in beast mode during actual combat operations. Why does this matter? Stealth is incredible. But sometimes you need firepower more than you need stealth. Sometimes the air defenses are already destroyed. Sometimes you're hitting targets in permissive airspace. Sometimes you need to carry eight bombs instead of two. Beast mode gives Israeli pilots that choice. Need stealth? Use internal base. Need firepower? Load external pylons. No other F-35 nation has certified this capability. May 2018. An Israeli F-35I strikes targets in Syria the first combat use of the F-35 anywhere in the world. Not by the U.S. Marine Corps, not by the U.S. Air Force, by Israel. The missions continue. Lebanon, Syria, Gaza, Yemen, then Iran. October 2024. Israeli F-35s penetrate Iranian airspace. They strike air defense sites. They hit military facilities. They reach targets deep inside Iran and return safely. The Pentagon is watching. NATO is watching. China is watching. Russia is watching. The F-35 just proved it can operate in heavily defended airspace against advanced Russian air defense systems. The operations continue. By March 2025, Israeli F-35s have flown over 15,000 combat hours, thousands of missions, multiple theaters, zero losses. The jet performs exactly as advertised, Actually, it performs better because Israeli modifications give it advantages standard F-35s don't have. The biggest test comes in June 2025. Israel launches strikes against Iranian nuclear facilities, the most challenging F-35 missions ever flown. Iranian air defenses are formidable. S-300 batteries guard key sites. Early warning radars scan the approaches. Fighter interceptors stand ready. This is the scenario the F-35 was designed for, penetrating advanced air defenses, striking strategic targets, surviving in contested airspace. Israeli F-35s lead the strike packages. They go in first. Their sensors map the air defense network. They identify radar emitters. They locate missile batteries. They transmit targeting data to following aircraft. Some F-35s carry Storm Shadow cruise missiles. Others carry spice bombs. The missions last hours. Over 100 targets across Iran, military sites, nuclear facilities, ballistic missile factories. The F-35s return. Every single one. The missions accomplish their objectives. Iranian air defenses fail to down a single aircraft. This isn't luck. This is exactly what the F-35 and Israeli modifications were designed to achieve. Air power experts call these missions the most challenging F-35 operations ever conducted. They showcase capabilities other nations are still developing. They prove the jet can perform its design mission against peer-level threats. And they demonstrate that Israeli modifications work exactly as intended. Here's what makes Israel's F-35 program unique. Most F-35 nations depend on the Autonomic Logistics Information System, ALIS, a global network maintained by Lockheed Martin. When an F-35 needs maintenance, ALIS provides diagnostics. When it needs parts, ALIS orders them. When it needs software updates, 
ALIS delivers them. The system is efficient, automated, cost-effective, unless missiles are falling on your country. Israeli Air Force officers looked at ALIS and saw a vulnerability. What if the network goes down? What if connections are disrupted? What if crisis response needs happen faster than the global system allows? They demanded autonomy. Israel operates its own sustainment system. Their technicians perform depot-level maintenance. They overhaul engines. They repair airframe components. They update software. When Israeli engineers develop a new modification, they test it on AS-15. When it works, they implement it across the fleet. No waiting for American approval. No submitting requests through ALIS. Complete independence. This matters more than it sounds. Modern warfare moves fast. Threats evolve. Adversaries adapt. The side that can respond faster has the advantage. Israel can modify their F-35s in weeks. Other nations need months or years working through U.S. channels. The arsenal nobody sees. AS-15's primary mission continues. Testing weapons. The Israeli Air Force uses indigenous munitions on every aircraft. F-15s carry Rafael's Python missiles. F-16s carry IMI penetration bombs. The F-35I will do the same. But integrating new weapons into the F-35 is complicated. The software needs updating. The sensors need calibration. The release mechanisms need programming. This is where AS-15 earns its keep. Engineers mount a new weapon. Test pilots fly the profiles. They simulate combat releases. They verify the weapon separates cleanly. They confirm the targeting systems work correctly. When everything checks out, the modification goes fleet-wide. The weapons list grows steadily. Raphael Spice Bomb, Python air-to-air -air missiles, Derby missiles redesigned for internal carriage, penetration bombs configured like standard Mark 82s but with enhanced capabilities. Each weapon gets tested, certified, integrated. The process never stops. The F-35 program continues evolving. Technology Refresh 3 is coming. Block 4 upgrades are in development. New sensors, enhanced processors, improved weapons capacity. For most F-35 nations, these upgrades arrive when the U.S. implements them. For Israel, AS-15 tests them first. Israeli engineers evaluate how new capabilities integrate with existing modifications. They identify conflicts. They develop solutions. They ensure Israeli systems remain compatible. Range improvements matter most. Standard F-35s can't reach Iran from Israel without refueling. Israeli modifications extend that range. Exactly how remains classified. Conformal fuel tanks might be involved. More efficient flight profiles definitely are. Engine modifications possibly. Whatever the method, Israeli F-35s can now strike Iranian targets and return without aerial refueling. This changes the strategic equation. Iran knows Israeli F-35s can reach them. They know their air defenses struggled against these aircraft. They know each Israeli F-35 can carry precision weapons that can destroy hardened facilities. The deterrent effect is real. What this means. AS-15 represents more than a test aircraft. It represents capability that money alone can't buy. Israel spent $5 billion on F-35s, but the real investment was negotiating autonomy, the ability to modify, the freedom to innovate, the independence to respond to threats on Israeli timelines. Other F-35 nations have excellent aircraft, but they're dependent on American systems, American timelines, American approval processes. Israel isn't. When threats emerge, Israeli engineers develop solutions. When adversaries adapt, Israeli modifications respond. The cycle operates independently of U.S. bureaucracy. This independence came at a cost. Israeli modified systems don't receive U.S. updates. When Lockheed Martin releases new software, it's designed for standard F-35s. Israeli aircraft need separate integration work. But Israel accepted this trade-off. They value responsiveness over standardization. The success of AS-15 and Israel's F-35 program sends messages worldwide. Small nations can negotiate capabilities previously reserved for superpowers. Indigenous defense industries can integrate with cutting-edge foreign systems. And stealth fighters can be adapted for regional threats without compromising their fundamental advantages. Countries watching include South Korea. They're developing their own stealth fighter. 
They're studying how Israel modified the F-35. Japan operates F-35s and wants greater autonomy. They're negotiating terms similar to what Israel achieved. The model works. Other nations want to follow it. For the American defense industry, Israel's program proves the F-35's adaptability. The aircraft can accommodate diverse modifications. It can integrate with different national systems. It can serve various operational requirements. This makes the F-35 more attractive to potential buyers who want both American technology and national independence. Aircraft AS-15 sits in its hangar at Tel Nof. It's flown hundreds of test missions. It's validated dozens of modifications. It's certified multiple weapon systems. The aircraft itself isn't classified. You can find photos online. But what it has proven remains partly secret. The full extent of Israeli modifications isn't public knowledge. The complete weapons list isn't published. The exact electronic warfare capabilities remain classified. What we know is enough. Israel operates the most independently capable F-35 fleet in the world. Their aircraft carry unique weapons. They run specialized software. They integrate with Israeli national defense networks. And they've proven their worth in the most challenging combat environments modern fighter jets can face. AS-15 made this possible. One test jet. One unprecedented agreement. One nation demanding independence. The result? Changed modern air power. The next time someone asks, what makes Israel's Air Force so effective? Remember AS-15. Remember the negotiations that made it possible. Remember the combat record it helped create. One test jet, 15,000 combat hours across the fleet, zero losses. That's not luck. That's engineering. That's dedication. That's what happens when you combine American technology with Israeli innovation and the freedom to make it your own. If this opened your eyes to military innovation, hit that like button and subscribe for more stories the mainstream media won't tell you.